So let's talk about Sony as a brand. We all know they are a very great brand with so many great items ranging from TVs, speakers, headphones, cameras which are all high in quality. But how does Sony perform in the smartphone department especially with the highly competitive mid-range market? Hey guys, Adam Lobo here from Adam Lobo TV and in this video, I'll be unboxing and giving you my full video review of the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II and I will give you a definite answer on who the phone is for by the end of this video, so keep watching. Let's first unbox the phone. Now the Sony Xperia comes in a white box with Xperia and 10 Mark II in the middle and Sony down below. Then at the back, you'll find some of the specs below as well. Then opening the box, you'll immediately find the phone itself. Underneath, there's a smaller white box which has the product info leaflet. Then at the back, there's these Sony headphones. A USB-A to USB-C cable. And the charging adapter. Now going over to the phone specs, the Sony Xperia 10 II comes with the Snapdragon 665 chipset with the Adreno 610 GPU. It comes with 4 gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of storage. Then it comes shipped with Android 10 with Xperia UI which looks and feels very stock Android. And it has IP65 and 68 dust and water resistant as well. Now as for the colour options here in Malaysia, there are a total of 4 colours for you guys to choose from where the one which I have is called black. Then it's also available in blue, mint and white. Now as for the phone's design and build, my first impressions even when I first held the phone's box was how light the phone was. Even with a slightly longer form factor compared to any other smartphones out right now. Now the sides are made of plastic probably to keep the weight and also the price down but I love the matte black finish at the sides which really complements the glass back finish both for the front and the back where it is made of Corning Gorilla Glass 6 which is indeed pretty strong. Now I don't like doing drop tests but I accidentally dropped the phone face first from a table level while I was cleaning and to my relief it was totally undamaged. Then the rear cameras are placed towards the left with a super thin camera bump so yes, it does not wobble if you place the phone on the surface. As for the phone spots and buttons, looking down below, there is the USB-C port. Now you won't find any speaker grills over there because the speakers are placed towards the bottom chin of the phone. Then on the right, there is the volume rockers and the power button which doubles up as the side fingerprint sensor which unlocks decently fast. Then on the left, there is the SIM card and the micro SD card slot and I love how you can easily open it with your fingernails instead of using a SIM ejector pin or getting your girlfriend, wife, husband or even boyfriend to borrow their earrings to poke the SIM ejector slot. Then on top, you'll find the almost extinct headphones jack. Oh yes! Still love them. So the display is surely one of the unique selling points of the phone. It's like they have shrunk their OLED TV into a small device where it comes with a 6-inch OLED screen with a longer aspect ratio of 21 by 9 wide and a screen resolution of 1080 by 2520 pixels. Now there's no fancy 90Hz refresh rate but when watching videos on Netflix and also on YouTube, especially when it comes to 21 by 9 content was amazing, especially with a wider screen format. Now as seen on the screen, you won't find any camera notches as there is a bigger forehead to accommodate the front facing camera where I totally did not mind the extra forehead space as I've always loved notchless phones so I could totally appreciate the overall experience when looking at a phone like this as my daily driver. 
Now as for the phone's cameras, there are three cameras as mentioned where the main camera is a 12 megapixel f2.0, 26mm wide lens and 8 megapixel f2.4, 52mm telephoto lens and another 8 megapixel f2.2, 16mm ultra wide angle lens. Now the regular shots were decent, when there's great lighting, the phone takes some nice pictures but the HDR mode does not turn on automatically on the auto mode but you can toggle it on the pro mode. Now I have to say that I really love the portrait mode on the phone where the phone performs at its best to get a nice subject to background blur and a proper shallow depth of field and to my surprise there was a colour shift for the ultra wide angle lenses compared to the main lens where although it does cover a great focal length but the main lens and the 2x zoom or the telephoto lens was great since there is a dedicated lens to zoom in 2 times optically. Then the outdoor night shots and the low light mode also had the right balance of highlights without really overexposing those night lights. Then looking at the phone's front camera, it has an 8 megapixel f2.0 aperture and the regular selfie shots were great especially under again great lighting. However, the portrait selfie did not perform as good as the rear camera, not so great when it comes to the edge detection as seen in these images. Now as for the phone's video taking capabilities, it records up to 4K 2160 up to 30 frames per second and based on my test footage while using the phone, the videos did have great quality but the image stabilization wasn't great so I would just recommend using the phone to record video at 1080p instead where the video quality was decent but way better in terms of the image stabilization. Also, I got a temperature warning if I use the 4K recording for a very long period of time so I would recommend to just stick to the 1080p video recording. Then as for the phone's front camera, it records up to 1080p up to 30 frames per second with also great stabilization. Now one thing they have realized is the software stabilization kicked in late especially for the first 2 seconds was usually shaky then once it works, it's totally fine so I hope a software update could solve this slight issue. As for the phone's sound quality, the speakers are at the chin area as mentioned earlier instead of down below next to the USB-C port. Now it is not a stereo speaker but it did sound clear. The volume was just okay but the bass seems to be quite good as well which made the phone vibrate as I was doing my sound test as seen over here and here is a quick sound test. Now in terms of the phone's software, it is shipped with Android 10 with the Xperia UI which felt really close to stock Android and I felt there wasn't any significant difference between the stock Android and the UI which was also nice to know. Now the only difference they have noticed is the phone had the side sense where there is the tiny little bar at the side of the screen to easily choose apps over there. And that was great since the phone has a longer screen real estate which makes it easier to use the device in one hand. Then there's also the one-handed mode where it shrinks the screen to easily be reached on a single hand. Then there's also the multi-window mode to also take advantage of the longer screen on the phone once again. And some may complain that the fact that it is using last year's Snapdragon chipset but I did not find any issues when using the phone as my daily driver which matters the most compared to any benchmark tests as such. Now as for the phone's battery, it comes with 3600mAh of battery and I have to honestly say that I was a bit skeptical on the battery life since 3600mAh isn't that great compared to other mid-range phones but to my surprise I got a total of 5 hours and 20 minutes off screen on time when I was at 10% battery with quite heavy usage so that was great to know. And the phone has fast charging up to 18 watts where you will need to buy the additional fast charger if you want to since it does not come in the box and although the phone comes with a glass bag but the phone does not have wireless charging so keep that in mind. Now in terms of gaming, because of its OLED screen and of course the front facing speakers, it was a great smartphone to play games on. Playing games like Asphalt 9 was nice and in PUBG Mobile it ran great with graphics at smooth and also frame rate at medium. Which is obviously not the highest settings but because of its OLED screen, I did not find any issues over there. Then the phone does feel a bit warmer towards the top part of the phone's camera but it did not interfere with the overall gaming performance.
So with all of this, who is the Sony Xperia 10 II for? Well, in my humble opinion, using the phone close to two and a half weeks, if you're looking for a smartphone where the camera is your utmost importance, then maybe at this point of time, you should not consider getting this phone. As for me, my overall drawback of the phone would be that. But if you want a smartphone to just consume videos on, have a great daily multitasking usage, and of course, a great battery life, then yes, this phone is for you, but considering its price is a tough price to compete with the likes of other smartphones within this price range. As for the phone's price here in Malaysia, it's going for 1,799 ringgit, and I'll leave links down below for you guys to get one. Alright guys, with this, do let me know what you guys think of the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II down at the comment section below. Would you guys get it? Or would you just wait for their flagship Sony Xperia 1 Mark II instead? Which I'll surely get my hands on and review it here on Adam Lobo TV. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys found this video helpful in making your purchase decision. And if you did, be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up. Like, share and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV if you haven't done so. My name is Adam Lobo and I'll catch you guys in my next video. And that was great since the phone has a longer screen real estate which makes it easier to use the device in one hand.